I don't think we should talk about it. Unless you're prepared to kill them. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, man. Again, Terence McGuana here. Welcome back to Canon Forever, and today we're going to be talking about Tough Guys Don't Dance from 1987. Tim Madden is an alcoholic ex-con prone to experiencing blackouts and having marital issues. One day, whilst looking for his stash of marijuana, he finds a blonde woman's severed head where his stash should be. Oh God! Oh man! Oh God! Oh man! Oh God! Oh man! Oh God! Oh man! Oh God! Now this movie is the brainchild of Norman Mailer, wrote and directed this film, although it does have rewrites by famed screenwriter Robert Town, who wrote Chinatown. This is a very strange movie, and the actual way this came to be is really strange as well. There was a period in the mid-1980s where Canon Films had a reputation of churning out really low-budget films that the critics absolutely hated, right? Although films like Breaking and, and Revenge of the Ninja were making money at the box office, Canon films were absolutely despised in the Hollywood circles and the film critics just came down on them like a ton of bricks every single time. Every time a Canon film came out, the, the critics would just roll their eyes. So Menachem Golan, he got the idea that he wanted to get some prestige on board the Canon group. Menachem Golan got the idea that he would try and bring on board some real auteur filmmakers and give them free reign to make whatever they wanted, right? So that he could win awards for Canon Films, finally. And one particular director that he was anxious to get on board was Jean-Luc Godard. Jean-Luc Godard being part of the French New Wave that revolutionised modern cinema. So what they decided to do is they were going to do an adaptation of William Shakespeare's King Lear, right? Jean-Luc Godard directing for a million dollars, apparently, John luc Godard was paid a million dollars to direct King Lear, right? And Norman Mailer was brought on, this famed American author was brought on to write the screenplay. Now, Norman Mailer, as part of his deal with Canon Films, is he got to write and direct his own film, which is Tough Guys Don't Dance, which is based on his own novel. It is a murder mystery. Right, it is a murder mystery, but the film decides not to play it very straight. You could see that there is an, a Tarantino influence come from this, right, where the story itself is sort of jumbled up and it's told in flashback. And to be honest, whereas a lot of films that are told in flashback can be really interesting and really intriguing, this film becomes a confusing mess. Right, it does become an absolutely confusing mess. But what really makes it work for me, I, 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 I must confess, I do like this film. But what makes it work for me is the scenes in it. Right, the the acting in this is top notch. The dialogue is very strange. Right, I wouldn't say that these characters speak like real human beings, to be perfectly honest. But there's something eerily fascinating about it. Right. Ryan O'Neill, even though he has that dreadful scene with the oh god, oh man, I actually think his performance in this film is, is fine. I think he's perfect in this role, to be honest. And I understand that he was not pleased with that scene. He did not want to do that scene, but Norman Mailer made him do that scene. So this is the director's vision here. And we also have Isabella Rosalini who has, who has quite a minor part, even though she gets top billing in this film, she's rarely in this. But the other the other two standout actors for me, Deborah Sandland, right, who plays Patty, who plays Ryan O'Neill's smart mouth wife. She is really good actually. I've never seen this actress before. And I know that she's had a, a long career in television, but she steals every scene that she's in. Absolutely brilliant. 
But the the biggest standout for me, right, is one of my all-time favourite low-budget actors. Wings Hauser. Wings Hauser. Wings Hauser, the star of Vice Squad. Right, I absolutely adore Wings Hauser when he's in anything. This guy steals every movie he's ever in, right? It may be some low-budget action piece of schlock, but he always brings his A-game. His real name is Gerald Dwight Hauser. He got his name Wings from playing uh, American football at college, right, because he was a wing back, so his nickname was Wings, and he carried that over into his acting career. He, he, he got his fame being on a television soap opera, The Young and the Restless, where he played David Hasselhoff's brother in The Young and the Restless, and he absolutely hated being on that show. He hated this sort of redundant dialogue that he had to read every single day on that show. What he did is he broke out of that part by taking on the role of Ramrod in the film Vice Squad. If you've never seen Vice Squad, it is such an exciting thriller. I absolutely adore that movie. And in that film, Wings Hauser plays this terrifying pimp called Ramrod, who is almost like a force of nature. In that film, he's absolutely terrifying in that part and he, there, there are some real sadistic moments in it so be warned but I must insist that you see him in this film Vice Squad it is great absolutely great and it's it's so funny that I I watched an interview with Wings Hauser and he talked about uh, how that part was so important to him it was his way of breaking out of these boring soap operas that he was in and the funny thing was uh, that he told this anecdote of where he was uh, wandering around a park in New York City in the early 80s. I'm not sure which one, let's say Central Park, right? At night of all, ti of all times, right? And I know that the, the crime rate in New York at that time was really hairy, right? But I, I have no idea why he was wandering about a park at night in the early 1980s. These thugs came up to him and he started to worry. He was like, oh no, they're going to rob me, they're going to hurt me what have you, and they recognised him, they were like, it's Ramrod from Vice Squad, oh my, right, so they, that, that part saved his life that night, right, and the thing is, whenever, he was the sort of go-to guy for, if you really wanted someone who was real, really unhinged in a, in a low-budget film, he was never really a major player in any sort of big, Hollywood productions, although he did star in a couple of them, such as A Soldier Story and even uh, Michael Mann's The Insider. And, and Tough Guys Don't Dance, he steals every scene that he's in, right? He just he just chews up the scenery. He is one of those actors that does just completely chew up the entire scene in every movie that I've ever seen him in. But honestly, the, the absolute jewel in the crown for Wings Hauser performances is that Vice Squad. You have to see Vice Squad. I think it came out in 1982 and it's just such an exciting film. The pace to this is exhilarating. It really is exhilarating and it's I, I put it all down to this performance. This guy is like a, a locomotive train. The, the the police are trying to hunt down this this crazed pimp in this movie and they just they just can't stop him. He's just an absolutely unstoppable force of nature in that film and it really is an incredible ferocious performance and I'm getting sidetracked going on about Wings Hauser right and it's a shame because I, I don't see a lot of actors in any type of films right whether it's mainstream or low budget I don't see a lot of actors that have that sort of presence that he has the, that kind of absolute command of the audience's attention right that Wings Hauser seem to bring to films that as a child or as a teenager, I completely dismissed. I was like, I'm never going to sit through that nonsense. And now, whenever, whenever a new, whenever a Wings Hauser film comes out on Blu-ray, I'm like, oh, I need to see that, right? And that's the good thing about Blu-ray is that a lot of these low-budget B movies are getting rediscovered. And Wings Hauser, he's definitely one of the one of the greats of that era, absolutely. But yeah, tough tough guys don't dance. It is, it is a strange crime thriller. I wouldn't, I, I don't know if I would recommend it to everyone, but if, if you, the cinematography in it's really lovely, right? The setting of this film in uh, Provincetown, Massachusetts, New England, the beaches, the harbour, it just, 
it just looks stunning actually and the, uh, the the score is lovely I love the score to it and I love the crazy dialogue the way the characters speak in this film it's not normal but uh, there's something really quite engaging and hypnotic about it thank you once again for watching the video if you like the video hit the like button if you want to subscribe to the channel hit the subscription button I'll be back very soon to talk about another canon film and until then have a lovely day Ciao!